Good morning. We are happy to welcome our parishioners and guests to St. Joseph's as we celebrate Christ the King Sunday. These are today's announcements. St. Joseph Home and School Silent Auction and Bake Sale will be held today at the Parish Center from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Come check out all the silent auction and bake sale items that, that are available for your shopping enjoyment while supporting St. Joseph's School. Father Worth will be leading the rosary for our beloved deceased this afternoon at 3.30 p.m. in the church. Please make at least one Sunday rosary this month. The parish office will be closed Thursday, November 25th, Friday, November 26th, and Monday, November 29th for Thanksgiving. Have a safe and blessed holiday. The 2022 St. Joseph Catholic calendars are available in the Mother Teresa Hall and in the back of the church. Please pick one up after Mass. Remember your loved ones with Christmas flowers. Envelopes are at the entrances of the church and in the pews for you to make a memorial gift toward the cost of Christmas flowers. Catholic Daughters Christmas Party will be held on Sunday, December 12th at 1.30 p.m. at the Parish Center. Please see the bulletin for more details. Father Wilhelm is a celebrant for this Mass, and I am Dave Nick, your lector. Let us prepare our hearts to celebrate Holy Mass. The opening song is number 270 in the hymnal, To Jesus Christ Our Sovereign King, number 270. <clears throat> to Jesus Christ our Sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, the praise and homage do we bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, Christ Jesus, Lord, and we And, O King, be not to every land and nation. For in your kingdom, nor do but alone be find salvation. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, us, Lord, and Redeemer. To you and to your church, great King, we pledge our heart's oblation. Until before your throne we sing in endless jubilation. Christ 
celebrate this great solemnity of Christ the King. And today as we enter into this Mass, we are concluding ordinary time. And we'll be moving in next week to Advent. How quickly time goes, I was reminded, this coming week is already Thanksgiving. Things move along. And as it says in Latin, sic gloria mundi, time flies. It just moves on and one of the things that we can always base a solid footing in is Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so as we enter into this Mass, let's allow Christ to be King and center of our lives. Our Mass today is for the living Shirley Malarkey, and we pray for her intentions and the intentions you bring to Holy Mass today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace and the love of Christ the King be with you all. As we now prepare our hearts, let's ask the Lord to do some scrubbing. Let's ask the Lord to do some healing. Let's open our hearts to God and asking him for his guidance and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. God the Father, 
Almighty ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, in your Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole of creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty's service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our scripture readings, and I'd like all of our children from second grade and younger to come forward for explaining God's word. And I'd like them all to meet me here right in front of this image of our Lord. Come right on up, children. Come right on up. God, this is a great group of young people. Today, I said, today we celebrate Christ the King. Now, in the United States, we have someone who's the head of our country, what do we call that person? Do we call them a secretary? Do you know what it is? What is it? It's the president. See, we really don't really understand well what it means to be a king. But a king has great rule. And Christian kings always ruled with the love of Christ. Now, I want to show you something on the statue, children, is there's three things that always a king has. A king has a crown and he has this. This is called a scepter and that means he rules over space and time. And what is he holding in his hand? Does anyone know what that is? Maybe I'll bring it closer to you. What is that? What does that look like to you? It's round. Does it remind you of anything? Is this the moon? Is this Mars? Is it Mercury? Is it Venus? It is a planet. It represents the Earth. And that Jesus holds us all in his hands. And so today, when you learn about Christ the King, he is a loving King who comes to us to protect us, who gives us a great gift, his love, and he gives us direction to live. And so I'm going to give you a blessing of Christ the King. So children, let's put our hands up like this. God, our Father, watch over our children. And as they continue to understand you, Lord Jesus, more deeply, may they always open their heart to you and to love you with their whole heart, their whole mind and soul. And may Almighty God bless you, and I'm going to make the sign of the cross, and then you make the sign of the cross. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let's ask the angels to surround us. Angels all around. Beautiful. Now, you follow on out. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. 
The word of the Lord. from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. 
So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated for a moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everyone who listens to the voice of Christ lives in truth. Today, we set a day aside to celebrate Christ as King. This is a really new feast in the Catholic Church because it's only about a um, hundred years old. It's very young, and it was established by a pope, Pope Pius XI, right after the second or after the First World War, and he wrote in his encyclical. He said this. He said, "If people continue to not live out their faith as Christians, and as Christian kings and nations no longer allow Christ to guide them, there will be worse wars to come." He was a prophet, wasn't he? Because we had World War II, which saw even worse killing than the First World War. And our wars that we have today are getting worse as we get older. What does that mean? It means we must be losing traction. And it's a call to every one of us today to allow Christ to reign in our lives. It's a very simple teaching. How can you allow Christ to reign in your life? Where have you not allowed him to come to be? Where have you blocked him out? Where have you put up a wall? Sometimes we put up walls because of certain things that we have gone through. It can be something as simple as somebody hurting our feelings all the way to trying to understand why we have death in the world. Why a loved one is taken from God who is so good. And we can set up walls. And Christ comes to break down those walls. You and I pray the Our Father how often a day? Once, twice, three, four times a day, I hope. Many times. And there's something in there that every time we pray the Lord's Prayer that says this, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means that you're allowing the Lord to help you to do the work here on earth as you will in heaven. In the scriptures, there's three times that um, the scriptures show us that Christ is showing himself to want to guide in our lives. And it's said in that second reading that all of us are called to be priests. Have you ever thought yourself to be a priest? Every one of us from baptism received three charges to be a priest, a prophet, and a king. And all of you are priests. You are all baptized into the common priesthood of Jesus Christ. What does a priest do? I should probably be careful with that because I don't sit at the rectory eating bonbons and watch TV all day. That's not what a priest does. I always think that as you imitate the sacramental priesthood which Father Worth and Father Fowl and I sharing that you are, in a way, to be cheerleaders in your family. It's one of the things that the homily is all about. The homily is supposed to cheer you on to not give up, to say, you know what, life's tough, but God, you have made promises, and I have experienced your promises in the past, and I know that you hear my prayers. Remember the three ways God hears prayers. Yes, not now, and I have a better solution for you. That's the way God answers prayers. He never says no to us. So you and I are to be cheerleaders among your family, to bring your faith as a common priest and you're baptized 
to the places where you work. When you go out for coffee, I'm going to tell you, when priests get together, it's probably about seven minutes after we have all of the polite things, and then we all have complaints. Oh, the Pope, what's going on with this guy? I can't believe he's making the decisions he's doing. What kind of a Pope do we have? Look at the bishops. They got together and they're now allowing people who are pro-abortion to come forward for Holy Communion. What's going on with these bishops? What's going on with our people? <laughs> that always happens too. I never talk about you, by the way. Too long. But we all seem to get on that negative way. We all struggle from it. But where can we pull back? Because Christ always does pull us back and say, there's a better way for this. So I want you to think about where you need to allow Christ to come in and take over in certain places in your life. Sometimes what we do is we're afraid of confession. And I just have you know, it's a very simple little room. And what happens when you go in there, there's not someone in there to condemn you more deeply. That is a place where we go to be freed so that we can move on, that we know how our relationship is with Christ and we can stand on that. But you know, we're afraid to go there because it's hard to reveal your heart and your soul to another person. As I've said to you, I try to go to confession once a week. And do you know what? I'm the dean of the area. I'm supposed to be the one that's the example. And I have to go to confession to my brother priest. And I have to reveal my deepest, darkest sins. And what happens when I go to confession? I leave them, I'm healed, and I can start again. I can be renewed. And that's the promise that Jesus gave us. So if there's something that you have been taking with you for a hundred years, it's time to get away from the heaviness of that that's aging you in your heart and your soul. When we carry things, when we condemn ourselves, when we try to hide things, do you know what happens? We age incredibly. We become, as when people get older, they back up, they want to stay home, they don't want to leave. It's the same thing that happens in our heart and our soul. We back up, we hide, we want to take it away. But Christ the King says, come to me, I have a better plan. So don't be afraid if that's one of the things that's keeping you away. If it's a way that you have family members that you sometimes keep at a distance, Jesus says, that what you do to the least of my brothers, you do to me. Don't keep family members and friends with old things that you have to keep them away. You know, Mother Teresa, she was watching one of her little nuns and there was a man who had leprosy. And leprosy, as you know, that in India, they are still fighting. Can you imagine that they're still fighting leprosy in, in places in this world that they don't have the proper way to get rid of this disease? And what this little nun was doing, she had a tweezer, and she was standing from a distance, and she was tweezing maggots out of that man who was dying of leprosy. And Mother Teresa, she shook her head and she said, Sister, she took that little tweezer and she touched that man. She said, you are to go to be Christ to him. And this is Christ that you're serving. And this is the beautiful <laughs> gift that Christ has come to you. That which you do to the least of your brothers, you do to him. Love Christ in those who are sick and suffering. Lastly, my thoughts are how afraid we have really gotten of each other. And one of the things that I really feel that we are almost afraid to go out to be with other people in different places. And where we have now, I think we're learning a whole lot more about COVID-19, we're learning you know, that it is a true, real disease. There's ways that we can fight it. And one of the things is that when people reach out to us, don't be afraid to reach back. How often when we are going, and I'll try to go, go do I shake hands, do I 
fist bump, do I elbow bump, or do I just stay away? I mean, this is something that we have now come to. We don't know how to act anymore. You know how you act as a Christian. You go out, and what you do, just don't worry, I've already washed my hands. And you take someone's hand, and you touch them. And you say, hello, and you have a wonderful day. It's great to see you. Don't be afraid to touch each other. Christ touches us in the most intimate way when we come to Holy Communion. Be Christ to one another. Allow your common priesthood to go out to bring healing not only to you, but to others. Those who know me, those who speak in my name, know the truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Let's stand together. <coughs> Through holy baptism, we've become a priest, a prophet, and a king. We are to rule with Christ. We are to speak in his name, and we are to sanctify ourselves and each other. And so together, let's profess the beautiful gift and ask the Lord to stir into flame the beautiful gift of our baptism. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ, you are king in center of our lives. Rule over us in the beautiful commandments that set us free when we follow them, the Beatitudes, how we are to treat one another in love and kindness, the sacraments that give us life and strengthen us to live each day in faith, hope, and love. Hear the prayers we present to you this morning. For Catholics and Christians throughout the world, may they evermore embrace Jesus Christ the Alpha and the Omega, as their King. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For a spirit of thanksgiving, that we may recognize the gifts we have received from one another and from God, appreciate those gifts, and give thanks for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are seriously sick, may God grant them healing. And for those who are dying, May Jesus, Mary, and Joseph accompany them in their final hours. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our parish, as we enter the final weeks of this year of St. Joseph, may we take away from this year ever greater confidence in our holy patron and the motto, Go to Joseph. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who are responsible for the building of our St. Mary's Chapel and Learning Resource Center, may God guide them as they build a facility fit for learning and the worship of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who have died in our parish, especially Lauren Kurtz and those whose names are on Mary's altar, and for the living Shirley Malarkey, whom this Holy Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayers. And on page 196 of your Missalette, there are beautiful prayers, and I think this is a beautiful prayer to conclude our prayers of asking God, our bidding prayers. So on page 196, let's pray together the prayer that's called Call to Holiness Prayer. Together, page 196. You, O divine breath, dwell within our hearts. With strong love, you assurge our fears. You call us to holiness, to justice, and integrity, to free those bond by oppression, to bring light where ignorance and darkness dwell. Come, drink from the streams of living water. Come, feast at the bread of life. Amen. Let us be seated now for our offertory. The offertory song is number 523 in the hymnal, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 523. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Look, O Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity in the heart of your most beloved Son, 
that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation for our sins. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We'll pray and we'll offer up the first Eucharistic prayer, the ancient prayer of the church. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you first. For your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, especially Shirley Malarkey, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and those who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, and our holy patron saint, and the blessed apostles, and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord Father, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us 
the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the bread and wine offered by your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Lauren Kurtz, and those who have died in this last year here at St. Joseph and our beloved who have died in our families. Who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. 
Through Christ our Lord, amen. To us also who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with light, you bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Remember, our Lord gives us freedom. And when we pray, thy will be done, we want to do the Lord's will, but he allows us to do his will. And may we hear at the end of our lives, you have done well, good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your church peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I eat your body and I drink your blood. Let my own sins, my failings, my own sacrileges not bring me to condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body. Be for me the healing remedy. Amen. Behold Jesus, our Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ 
Keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. in the hymnal, I am the bread of life, number 391.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask you, O Lord, that glorifying and obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. For the final blessing, I'd like to thank our brother knights who are here today. Today it's called the Patriotic Mass. It's a Mass that we've had for many years, sponsored by the Knights of Columbus to remind us that it's Christ's kingdom that we look to. And so I want to thank them for their beautiful work that they do. This Wednesday at Religious Education, we are going to have a degree for our seniors who have joined the Knights of Columbus to be brought in to the Knights. And if you uh, want to hear something, the Knights of Columbus is not the same organization your grandpa and your grandpa's joined. So it's an organization that's really geared towards family and there's been great changes. We don't have the whole four degrees anymore. And so we just have the first, that degree to come into the third degree and then the fourth degree is the honor guard and that's another degree. And so I just want to thank them for their good work. Some of you who can't see in the back, but if you look up into the um, balcony, our pipes, as you know, we went into an electronic organ some years ago and so the pipes were donated to a church in Minnesota and the Knights helped us take all of the woodwork that was up there and it's the first time we've seen that wall since 1923. And there's an extra room we got on the right hand side and it was used to be the choir robe uh, where those who sang in the choir, the robes were up there and if a person goes up there, you can see what the original painting of our church was. It was all of drab. <laughs> so you can see how beautiful our church is painted now as it once was before. And we're going to be doing some work up there to make it all one level. Because over the years, by getting different organs, we've cut steps and putting a piano up there. It's just really brick a bracket it all together. And so we want to make it one level so there isn't any hazards of falling if we go up to the choir loft. So thank you, Knights of Columbus, for your great help in putting that together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Closing song is number 266 in the hymnal, Crown Him with Many Crowns, number 266. Awake my soul. 
Creation will rise to dance and sing.